Hello and welcome back to our plumbing course. I'm Joe Carswell and this lesson covers the process of installing PEX pipe. We're going to go through crimping connections, so let's get right into it. First, let's take a close look at our fittings and how we're going to crimp all these parts together. If you remember from our materials lesson, we went over a brass barbed PEX fitting and a plastic barbed PEX fitting. Both of them are pretty much the same. They do the same thing, but we will install them just a little differently. So let's take a close look at this brass fitting. And I want to show you these barbs. There's two raised ridges on this uh, fitting on either end. We need to line up our crimp ring. This is a standard PEX crimp ring right over those two barbs. So placement of this ring for a good seal is critical. And when we have our pipe on here, our ring should sit about an eighth of an inch with an eighth of an inch of the pipe showing. That centers that ring over those raised ribs. And this standard ring can be used with a brass fitting, but there's a better way to do this. We have what's called a pro crimp ring. This ring has a plastic spacer on it. So this takes care of this job of spacing this ring off of the end of this pipe. Now when I put my fitting in, push it all the way to the end, I've got this automatic fixed ring at my eighth inch space off of the end. Now I can crimp it, it's not gonna move around. That works really well. I have a variation of this in our plastic pipe. This plastic pipe has some standoffs, these little plastic standoffs. And when I push my pipe in, it not only works to stop my pipe, but it will also take a standard PEX ring. As you can see, those little standoffs will hold that ring off of the end of that pipe. The downside of this particular uh, fitting though is that it does not hold the ring in place like my Pro Crimp ring does. So make sure that you're very aware of where that ring sits at the moment that you're getting ready to crimp it. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and crimp both of these rings and see how that works. So I have a tool here, and we've been through this tool in our tool video. Really heavy duty tool, heavy duty handles. It has a half inch uh, crimp area here, and then a three quarter crimp area here. We'll be using the half inch today. All of our pipe here is half inch. And when we pull it together, those jaws come together, and in this last third of the pull, it gets really tight. And when you hear that snap, that is that uh, these jaws clamping down on the ring. It will actually make that ring smaller. It will clamp down on the pipe, which then clamps down on our fitting. Then we get our watertight seal. Hi, sorry for the interruption. I had a quick message for you. We offer a lot of other lessons at our learning portal, which is tradeskillsu.com. If you're a teacher and you found us here, we have a ton of other resources to help you with your students teach them construction in a digital environment. You can find those at teachconstruction.org. Once again, thanks for watching. Let's get back to the video. So let's go ahead and do that with a fitting installed. I've got my plastic fitting here, and I can go ahead and put this fitting in my jaws, making sure that my ring is up against my stop, and I'll pull it tight just to where it grabs the ring. Now it'll kind of hold everything in place. I'm going to go ahead and pull these handles. And when you hear the snap, that is that ring clamping down and making that seal. So now when we open it up, it's a little hard to get it out of here once it's clamped. But now we have a crimped connection and that should be a watertight seal. We're not done yet though, we should check this fitting. We have what's called a feeler gauge. This is just a special little tool that has an opening for half inch and an opening for three quarters. It has a specific diameter to it. We would place this over our fitting. And if it fits over that sort of tightly with a little friction, it means that the crimp went well. If there's a lot of play in there, it means it crimped too far. A crimp that goes too far can crack the fitting. If the ring is still too big, it means that we might get a leak. Now let's look at our other fitting, crimp that one and see how that goes. So I have my brass fitting with a pro crimp ring on it, PEX pipe. Let's put this in the tool and crimp it. 
This one is a lot easier because the ring won't be moving around for us. And we can go ahead and close that on there just right. Make sure that you get the ring centered or the crimp band centered in the tool and that the tool is square to the pipe. If, if you see me struggling here a little bit, this might look a little goofy. Typically when you're crimping, you're crimping a pipe in a wall or it's fixed. This uh, six inch piece of pipe floating around on the table is not very realistic, but the crimp will happen anyway and it works just the same if you're working in a wall. So I'll go ahead and crimp this connection. This last third takes a lot of effort to close that tool. Once it snaps, we're done with our process. We can pull our fitting out. Let's check this with our feeler gauge. And that looks good to me. It's a nice fit, not too small, not too large. So that's the basics of your crimped connections. That should get you through any options that you need. This works on any type of fitting, whether it's a coupler, straight coupler, a T, and a 90, whatever. I love plumbing. I hope this is fun for you. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the later lessons.